welcome. Welcome to this Thirsty Thursday edition of Liquid Lunch on Newsmax TV. I'm John Tobacco, coming today live as we do every single day, noon to 2 Eastern, from the Question Tequila Studios. We're our own little special Liquid Lunch outpost for Newsmax TV downtown in New York City. We are on Broadway, right down the street. Before getting into a whopper of a Thursday Thursday show, the New York Stock Exchange is experiencing some technical difficulties this morning, down just under 100 points. There's still a lot of concerns and fears about what's happening with the China trade talks. There's bipartisan legislation the other night uh, against Hong Kong, against their actions in Hong Kong, is making people fearful that maybe the trade talks aren't going to go so good. Down 100, nothing crazy there. Bitcoin broke below 8,000 yesterday. It's down about 400 today at 7,500. As I've been telling you for a while, 8,000 was a safety net. Below there, it could go as low as 5,000. So stay alert, stay nimble, uh, and, and stay uh, not investing in Bitcoin because I told you to, because I only tell you what I do on this show. So don't take any financial advice from me. Now, this guy joined again as usual, Frank Morano. You can take his financial advice or any advice. And uh, Shell Farley also joins us in the studio. Shell, how are you? Shell has been on the show before. She's been on our show, What's the Deal, on Newsmax TV. She's a uh, Republican candidate for New York's 18th Congressional District. And uh, Shell, we're going to go to some uh, live impeachment and then come back and get some of your thoughts on uh, what's happening in Congress and what you're going to do to stop things like this. Get something done. New York 18. If uh, you don't know, Sean Patrick Maloney is the current uh, occupant of New York 18th Congressional District. He's one of the leading voices to hunt down, chase down, impeach the president. So uh, Shell's point of view and what she'll do when elected uh, is going to be important. So we're going to go down to the impeachment hearings, and uh, we'll be back in studio with Shell Farley and Frank Morano. Looks like our uh, overpaid and underworked Congress folks down in Washington are taking a little break right now, maybe a little lunchtime uh, nap or something, but uh, I'm sure they'll be back shortly spewing all kinds of crap. Um, we're going to take, uh, I mentioned Sean Patrick Maloney, and Shell Farley joins us in studio today. She's the Republican candidate to take uh, Sean Patrick Maloney out of that seat uh, and hopefully support the president, Shell. Um, let's take a look at what uh, Congressman Maloney had to say. asking you one who would benefit from an investigation of the Bidens I assume President Trump would benefit. there we have it see <laughs> didn't hurt a bit did it didn't hurt a bit but let me ask you something Mr. Maloney hold on sir excuse me I've been very forthright and I really resent what you're trying to fair do fair enough you've been very forthright this is your third try to do so sir didn't work so well the first time did it we had a little declaration come in after you remember that and now we're here a third time and we got a doozy of a statement from you this morning there's a whole bunch of stuff you don't recall so all due respect sir we appreciate your candor but let's be really clear on what it took to get it out of you so shell let's talk about this uh, here is someone that the left today is louding as a great witness that who he, he taught, said that there was a quid pro quo um and then here's sean maloney literally smashing the guy um, and, and actually questioning his credibility. So it's, like it's ridiculous. Well, but the other thing that is really important is that, of course, Ambassador Sunlin said that he asked the president directly. And he said, what do you want from Ukraine? And the president said, I want nothing. No quid pro quo. So what are we going to believe? But, I mean, what I think is that this is a huge waste of time and money. We have an election in less than a year. Um, instead, we should be focusing on actually getting things done. And nobody's getting anything done. Explain to me why we have not passed the USMCA, uh, the new NAFTA. You know, it, this is uh, amazing to me. I, I think people look at this uh, around the world and think that this is a joke, that this is what we're focused on while there's real problems in the country. Uh, trade, you mentioned, uh, but uh, infrastructure, prescription drug pricing. I mean, you can go down the list. That Once everything in America is perfect, then let's worry about undoing the results of the last election before the next one takes place. But uh, let me ask you about your district, Shell, because we're profiling these 31 districts, which are currently represented 
by Democrats in Congress, but that President Trump won in 2016. Because in some ways, this is the key not only to control of the House, but probably who ends up controlling the presidency. Why would Maloney, uh, since he does represent a moderate district, which yours is, why would he be making such a hard left turn against the president when his constituents, some of them, or a lot of them may be Democrats, but they're certainly not rabid, pro-impeachment, Trump-hating Democrats, are they? Frank, you're absolutely right. I mean, this is a district that the president won. This is a district that the president is expected to win again. So why in the world is it that Sean Maloney is coming out so pro-impeachment? Look, for months, he effectively lied, saying that you know he wasn't in favor of impeachment. He's now gone all in. I mean, my view, and a lot of people wonder, is he actually running? Mm. Yeah, well, let me point something out to you, Shell. I've been making this observation right here on Liquid Lunch. Frank and I live in New York 11, mm -hmm. and uh, that had Republican representation for quite a long time. Um, and Max Rose, our congressman now, ran as this military veteran, moderate. He wasn't going to be with the crowd. He was going to fight for us. Wrote an op-ed in our local paper and said that he was against the impeachment that it would divide our country and our community and everything else. And then two weeks later, he came out and voted for impeachment. It, to me, it's the same thing. Nancy Pelosi came to these guys. She said to Sean Patrick Maloney, uh, hey, listen, you got a tough challenge with, with Shell Farley there. And you're going to need my dough from Washington. So don't be Mr. Moderate. Get on board or you're not getting any money. I think that happened with Max Rose and it's happening with Maloney. Is, is his money coming from there? It certainly is. Uh, he's not raising as much money as he typically does, um, which is fascinating. Uh, but again, I really wonder why we are spending all this time on impeachment. So, uh, so and what, what is the biggest issue that Congress should be focused on? I actually think we should pass the USMCA. Mm -hmm. um, it's crazy. I mean, the NAFTA agreement was outstanding for over 25 years. It had never been renegotiated. It's crazy. You know, I sell companies for a living. You know, after you sell them, always a year or two later, somebody comes back and wants to, you know, amend the contract. The fact that this wasn't amended for all this time. But it doesn't surprise me because do you know? Know what percentage of members of Congress are actually uh, warriors? I'm afraid to ask. Far too many, whatever yeah. it is. No, what it's percentage? Close, close to half. It's 42%. Wow. And so it's no surprise that we are not getting anything done. It's ridiculous. I'm an engineer. I mean, my job is oh. to actually fix problems <laughs> and make create solutions. And instead, you know, lawyers just look for problems and never want to find a solution. I, it's very peculiar, um, everything that's happened in Washington. I, there seems to be such a disconnect between the people working in Congress, not only the members themselves, but their staff, and the people that cover Congress and the rest of America. I mean, do you get the sense in your district that people are terribly focused on these impeachment proceedings? Not at all. No. No. And you brought up a good point. They are focused on, you know, why their roads are falling apart. They are focused on why their health care is so expensive, uh, why their taxes are through the roof. Um, you know, property taxes are ridiculous in New York. Uh, we've talked about this. I mean, the New York delegate... It wow. is outrageous. And this is the kind of thing I want to do and actually get something done. And that is why my website is getsomethingdone.us or congressgetsomethingdone.com. Wouldn't that be nice for a change? Congress something done. getsomethingdone.com. Um, uh, we should start right behind that. That will never happen. dot com. At least <laughs> un until uh, Shell gets there. But, no, but the you know, issue of raising the tax cap—that's that, something that Democrats and Republicans in states like New York should sure. be able to work together on. Absolutely. In order to make something. I want to go back to something you said. Forty-two percent of our representatives in Congress mm -hmm. are attorneys. Yes. So, I mean, you know, there's a lot of jokes about attorneys, but I mean, attorneys are trained to work by the hour. <laughs> and attorneys are trained to try to bring in as much staff as possible to create more man hours. That's like what our government does. And attorneys are trained in many instances to procrastinate as long as possible. So that makes a lot of sense. They're almost like a union. They have 42%. They have a plurality, at least. Absolutely. And look, this is nothing against lawyers. My husband is a lawyer. Okay. However, lawyers are trained to look for all of the potential problems that could be and to you know, make sure that they avoid them. Instead, let's just actually get the problem well, but solved. Also, whether lawyers are the best people or the worst, um, mm -hmm. 
you know, the fact that 42% of Congress are attorneys, it's not really representative of the country. Not because at all. 42% of the population, at least not yet, uh, are not attorneys. Let's uh, hope not. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, I do want to ask you about an issue you raised when you ran for U.S. Senate um, in, uh, here in New York. And I know it's not necessarily a big an issue in a lot of middle America because there aren't as many renters as there are in places like New York City. But you proposed what I thought was an incredibly innovative idea of allowing rent to to be tax deductible. Yes. So, but I always I like was kind of sore yeah. that I have to subsidize John's tax deduction for his mortgage <laughs> payment, but as a renter, I don't get any of that back. Uh, is that still something you'd pursue in Congress? Absolutely. In fact, I have talked to the White House about it, and I think there's a lot of support in Congress because every state has renters. Mm. And it is not fair that, you know, you, you can deduct your mortgage, you know, it's capped at 750000 so make it a similar cap in a rent. Yeah. It mm -hmm. would make a dramatic difference and it would really help so many hardworking people Absolutely. to save for a down payment. When I see John in the morning, first thing I say is you're welcome. <laughs> oh, good morning. <laughs> <laughs> That's his favorite morning greeting. But uh, the, the people that we have in, in Washington right now, Shell, they have, I think Congress has an 18% approval rating. And that's Republicans and Democrats. Pathetic. And the majority of them there are incumbents. And the majority of them can just get along to go along in, in the whole machine. And your candidacy is like the outsider. I know you've ran before, but you're an engineer by trade. You're, you're in the business of, of free markets and capitalism. Can you apply some of those business and solutions to running the Congress, uh, the 18th Congressional District? Absolutely. I think that's what we need. Uh, but the other thing that I know both of you have been in favor of, I'm also a big fan of term limits. And I think that that is a lot of, that that, oh, that would solve a lot of problems You know, what well. we're seeing this week is a textbook example of why we need uh, term limits, in my judgment. But uh, it's going to be interesting. We're going to be watching this race, and everybody else running in any of these 31 districts is certainly welcome to come on the show, including Congressman Maloney. We'd certainly have a lot of questions for him uh, and how he's been conducting himself throughout these impeachment proceedings. But we wish you the best of luck. Thank you, Frank. We've had uh, Marjorie Green on. She's running in uh, Georgia 8. Um, she's an entrepreneur, a yeah. businesswoman. Uh, the judge we had from up, upstate was, what was it? Uh, uh, I'm not sure, uh, actually. Uh, you know what? There's 31. We'll you lose track. Yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, we're trying to highlight all 31 of those districts and give a voice to people that otherwise aren't going to be able to get on TV and get their voice heard. Yours is uh, welcome here anytime. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much, much, John. What a pleasure. You're the best. Uh, we bring on the guests that know where the rubber meets the road, and uh, it takes a lot to stick your head up and run for office. And just one other piece of breaking news that I want to bring to your attention, and we'll analyze this throughout the day, is that apparently Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has officially been indicted on corruption charges in Israel. Okay. So uh, apparently he's been indicted on bribery, so that must mean that Donald Trump committed bribery, because oh. they're friends. He's, this is corroborating evidence. Uh, we'll cover the impeachment, we'll cover the indictment, we'll cover all that. It's a Thursday, Thursday. Uh, Jeffrey Lickman, El Chapo's attorney, one of the most famed criminal defense attorneys in the world, joins us a little later to break down the impeachment with us also, everything that's going on in Iran, right after this.